I have been having some conversations with some leaders just talking about what's transpired over the last three or four months and, and just better understanding the, the fatigue uh, that has taken place as a result of really grabbing the buckets, if you will, and carrying more water, right? And, and just being great leaders during COVID and, and all of the craziness. And th there's been lots and lots of talk about, you know, how are you refilling your cup, this whole idea of restoration? And it kind of got me thinking to myself, um, you know, the, the difference between like, listen, you, you all are pros, right? Pros are pros. We get it. Um, and yes, you, you have to have talent in order to be a pro. We get it. Um, everybody is, you know, that, that's in the business, that's having any success in the business, has particular skill, skill sets and have talent. Um, but there, there's a difference between sort of like that pro athlete that, that makes it for a couple of years and, you know, career is over before you know it. And that person who becomes inducted into the Hall of Fame is an example, right? <clears throat> it's not just skill set. Everybody's got the skill set. We get it, right? You wouldn't be in the pros if you didn't have the skills. You wouldn't be in the pros if you didn't learn how to develop skills that you didn't have so that you could be a, a more well-rounded player. The ones that make it year after year after year and actually have an incredible career have some other abilities and some other focuses that the ones that are short don't have. Um, they understand why they do what they do. That they, they, they have a need to succeed and they've identified it. The difference between, hey, what's your why? I'm talking about they have a, a deep-seated need to succeed, and they've been able to identify specifically what it is. They have answered some questions. Um, you know, what, what is it that, that fuels them? Are, are, do they operate out of fear? Do they operate out of abundance? Do they want to win, or are they just more afraid of losing? Um, how do they visualize? There are visual people that, that, and you can hear this on the golf course all day long. There's a great book. I think, I think it was a, a good watch spoiled that, that talks very specifically about the difference between visualizing a good shot versus visualizing the bad shot. Your mind subconsciously will always deviate to whatever it is that you're visualizing. So if you look at a pond and you go, whatever you do, don't hit it in the water. Nine times out of 10, you're hitting it in the water, right? But these pros have deep, they, they have dived deep into these questions and, and, they've, and they're answering them. They are on a constant quest for making sure that they operate at absolute optimal levels while not burning themselves out. They feel themselves correctly and they know what that is for their body, right? Because we know not all nutrition plans are created equal and not all, not one works for everybody else, right? These pros, these long-standing successful human beings are not afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to seek uh, information. They're not they're, they're not sitting back just going, hey, it is what it is. They're in constant growth mode. And as I was always thinking about these people talking about, hey, you know, it's about restoration. I get it. I totally understand. There's always a time where you've got to restore, but it's not, it's not an event. It's a routine. Meaning this is not one of those things where we come out of the gates and we go, hey, listen, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't lead on March 12th, whenever this whole thing started, we didn't just all of a sudden start leading. No, we were prepared. We had done lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of work to get ourselves in a place so that if, when something like that happened, there were people that were there, you were there to be the leader, be the voice in your communities, be the pro. We understand that you have to have regular restoration, regular skill building, regular endurance training, regular mind 
expansion, regular, all of these things. And the reason we understand that is because we have allowed ourselves to admit that we don't know something, allowed ourselves the opportunity to think about the possibility. And we've reached out and gotten mentors and or coaches to help us through that. Because these are the people that, that would say, hey, listen, what are you trying to accomplish, right? Do you need to win or do you want to win? What are some of the areas where, because they can see it, right? They get to see it from outside, right? Yesterday, I talked a little bit about this idea of like expanding your mind, right? So this is, this is an interesting one, right? There, there's, a, there's a guy named Dr. Amen who had, did a bunch of research on, on the impact of your brain and, and really ultimately it gets into Alzheimer's and, and how nutrition and um, you know, movement and exercise and all of these things, right? There's a guy named Dave Osprey, uh, Bulletproof Coffee, who, who kind of went through the same journey of this whole biohacking and what does that mean and what are the technologies that are available. There's this guy named Dr. Uh, Peter Diamandis that talks about from, from a health and vitality perspective. He's also talking about how technology is impacting all kinds of industries, ours included. And, and just give you one example, the first autonomous cars are not cars at all. They're actually trucks, right? 18 wheelers. Well, there's a lot of 18 wheelers on the road. Just ask anybody that lives on an inter interstate, right? Well, he talked a little bit about what that impact would look like. Well, all of a sudden, huh. So there's not a limitation to how many hours that truck can drive. Oh, so all of a sudden distribution centers don't need to be where they currently are. Oh, well, wait a minute. We've got hundreds of thousands uh, of truckers on the road. What are they going to do? Well, they won't have a job. Well, wh what does that mean to the commercial real estate business, investment real estate business, you know, um, you know supply chains, all of these different things? I, I would never even think of any of that stuff, but having a place where you can reach out and go, hey, listen, what's the community that's going to help me in this space to, to broaden my view? Who's the coach that's out there that can help me see my limitations and therefore my opportunities? It doesn't have to be somebody that knows your name. It can be. Hey, it can be your spouse, right? It can be your manager. It could be your the person that has the desk next to you. It could be uh, a, a podcast. It could be a YouTube channel. It could be any number of things, books and blogs and blogs and you name it. But ultimately, the one thing that these longtime career professionals have that the others don't is a willingness to seek out answers and input from coaches and mentors. So I hope you have the right coaches and mentors and the right community around you to help you become that career Hall of Fame professional. You guys have an awesome day.